Good morning, and welcome to Blessed Sacrament Church. Please stand, and let's say together the peace prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O oh, Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Please take a moment to share a greeting, a, a wave, or a smile, or a nod to those around you. Wonderful. Our celebrant today is Father J.T. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Welcome and good morning. My name is Father J.T. Tanner. I'm one of the Jesuit priests here at Blessed Sacrament Church. We welcome everyone who has joined us for this gathering, for this celebration of the Eucharist, for all those faces that we see every week, for people who haven't been here in a very long time, welcome back. And for those who are here for the first time, we are so happy that you're joining us today. If at any point during the service you need to use the bathroom, they are in the back of the church. On this side is the women's bathroom, and on this side is the, is the men's bathroom. Today, we are invited to consider our stories. My mom always says to me, JT, tell me the story of your life. It's a way of getting me to talk to her, and it always works. <laughs> and so God says to us, tell me the story of your life. And we are invited to consider how God's story mixes with our own. How are those two things coming together, God's story and our story? We acknowledge sometimes that we push God away, that we don't leave space for his story, for God's story to mix with ours. And so we turn to God and say, God, please help us write our own story. And in that process, we find mercy and compassion and love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. God who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose. Grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Joshua. <clears throat> Joshua gathered together all the tribes of Israel and Shechem, summoning their elders, their leaders, their judges, and their officers. When they stood in ranks before God, Joshua addressed all of the people, if it does not please you to serve the Lord, Decide today whom you will serve, the gods your father served beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose country you now are dwelling. 
As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. But the people answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord for the service of other gods. For it is the Lord God who brought us and our fathers up out of the land of Egypt, out of a state of slaves. He performed those great miracles before our very eyes and protected us along our entire journey and among the people through whom we passed. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. and see the goodness of the Lord. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. The Lord has eyes for the just and ears for their cry. The Lord confronts the evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them, and from all their distress he rescues them. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and those who are crushed in spirit he saves. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Many are the troubles of the just one, but out of them all the Lord delivers him. He watches over all his bones. Not one of them shall be broken. Taste and see the goodness of A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, be subordinate to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives should be subordinate to their husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is head of his wife, just as Christ is head of the church. He himself, the savior of the body. As the church is subordinate to Christ, so wives should be subordinate to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and handed himself over for her to sanctify her, cleansing her by the bath of water with the word, that he might present to himself the church in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing that she might be holy and without blemish. So also husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one hates his own flesh, but rather nourishes and cherishes it, even as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave 
his father and his mother, and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak in reference to Christ and the church. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Many of Jesus' disciples who were listening said, This saying is hard. Who can accept it? Since Jesus knew that his disciples were murmuring about this, he said to them, Does this shock you? What if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life, while the flesh is of no avail. The words I've spoken to you are spirit and life, but there are some of you who do not believe. Jesus knew from the beginning the ones who would not believe and the one who would betray him. And he said, for this reason I had told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by my Father. As a result of this, many of his disciples returned to their former way of life and no longer accompanied him. Jesus then said to the twelve, Do you also want to leave? Simon Peter answered him, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I had this experience this week of talking to many different people in many different situations, people here at the parish, people in other locations and other parishes, other schools, and then friends and family. And it was interesting because there seemed to be a convergence, like everyone was talking about the same thing. And everyone was saying that they felt something. And they felt helpless. And it was this dominant feeling that came out of all of these conversations. And sometimes it was overwhelming to have this conversation with people. They felt helpless in the midst of everything that is happening in the world right now. The spread of COVID and this new Delta variant. Global warming came up in several of these conversations. Homelessness, the people that have to live on the streets, especially here in Hollywood, and how the city is responding to that. And then everything that is happening in Afghanistan, it's been on the front cover of the LA Times almost every single day this week. And talking about that, it seems as if everyone felt there's nothing we can do about it. We just watch it happen. And it all felt and it all feels so fatalistic, like the story of our lives and the story of the world has already been written and we're just watching it play out. And we have no say, and we can't contribute anything to it. We can't fight against these evils in the world and in our lives. And the more we try to help, 
the more we are faced with the reality that we have no ability to help, no power, no agency, no impact. And whenever I feel this way, and especially after these conversations, I always ask a question. I say, where is God in the midst of this? Where is God in all of this? It's a classic question. Where is God in the midst of, suffer in the midst of suffering? Did God plan this all out? Was this part of God's plan? And are we just puppets in this story that God wrote a long time ago? The answer to that question, according to our faith, according to scriptures, according to this tradition, is yes and no. <laughs> it's somewhere in between. God has written the story of the world, and the beginning and the end are set. And the beginning and the end are good, very, very good. We were created in goodness, and we are destined for eternity and glory and eternal life. But it's the middle of the story that's kind of unclear. It's the core of the book. So we don't exactly know how we're going to get to the end and how we're going to get to what we're destined to be. So just imagine the book of your life and of the entire world. And when you open it up, you see the first chapter written out completely, and it's beautiful. And then you skip ahead to the end chapter, written out, it's beautiful. And then as you go through the middle, there are some things written in, but there's all these empty spaces. That's us. That's where we come in. That's our part to play in the story. It's our choices that determine how those middle chapters are going to look. In that first reading, Joshua tells the people, decide today whom you will serve. It's that important word, decide. You decide. He doesn't command them to serve God, nor does he say that God is commanding them, nor us. He tells them to decide, to write in those empty spaces. So we do have agency. We are not moot. We have an ability to decide how we can be in this crazy and painful and sometimes tragic world. We can't control the actions of others, even when we want to or feel the need to, but we can control our own actions. We can choose life and love and service. We can choose the goodness that God offers to us, the words of eternal life that the disciples choose today in the gospel. And how can we choose those things? We choose those things by being here today, not only by setting aside time for God, but setting aside time for one another to be here in this community. We choose these things by what we give our attention to, our time, our energy, and our money. And there's always invitation there. What do I, what do I give my time, my energy, my love, and my money to? We choose goodness by allowing ourselves to be inconvenienced by the needs of others, to be, in a sense, subordinate to one another out of reference for Christ, out of reverence for Christ, in the sense of paying attention to how our actions affect those around us, even strangers, especially strangers, even those that the world has told us we owe nothing to. But we also know that we can choose the opposite of this. We can choose the opposite of love and service and gratitude. And quite often we do. We can choose selfishness and comfort at the expense of others. We can choose isolation. We can choose to shield ourselves from the pain of others, even outright, outright ignore the burdens of others so as to live without the burden of service. We can choose to walk away from Jesus and the things he wants for us, just as those in the gospel today walk away from Jesus. We can choose that, and Jesus respects that choice. When those people walk away, Jesus does not chase after them. He lets them go. But we can choose to come back. I'd like to imagine that after those people went back to their former way of life and walked away, 
that there's somewhere written somewhere that they came back, that they eventually found their way back to the friendship that Jesus was offering them. Walking away is not the end of the story. Coming back, maybe even over and over again, can be written into those middle chapters. No matter how many times we mess up or choose the opposite of what Jesus wants for us, we can always turn another corner and be led back to life, love, service, and the goodness that God wants for us. Our mistakes and the things that we sometimes feel helpless fighting against in the world are not the end of the story. What God wants for us, what God invites us into, what God wants to bring us into, that is the end of the story. How we reach the final chapter is up to us. Please stand. In the midst of this world and everything that is happening, we choose love and service, and we show that choice by professing our faith together. And so together we proclaim and profess, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Grateful for all that God has done for us, let us remember all those who are in need. For the church, as we strive to proclaim to the world the words of the eternal life that Jesus has given us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For refugees and all those who are forced to leave their homes in search of safety and security, we pray especially for our Afghan partners being resettled in the States. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who do not believe or who turn away from the Lord, that they may yet hear God's invitation and listen to the words of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of Haiti, that we and the world will respond to their desperate need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters living on the streets in Hollywood, that we will seek ways to house them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for the sick and infirmed of our community, Linda Diaz, Heidi Leturte, for our recently deceased, Laura Escobedo, for the petitions in our book and box of intentions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Marjorie Abiana, Mary Ann B. Cozine, let us pray in silence for our personal intentions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, your Son Jesus brings us the words of eternal life. He grants us the grace to respond to those words. Graciously hear all of these our prayers which we ask in his name, who is Lord forever and ever. Please remain standing. As we prepare to share God's gift, let us say the generosity prayer of St. Ignatius of Loyola. Lord, teach, teach me, me to, to be generous. generous. Teach, teach me, me to serve, serve you as you deserve, deserve. To, to give and not to count, count the cost, to, to fight, fight and not, not to heed the wounds, wounds to, to toil and not to seek for rest, to, to labor and not to ask for reward, save that, that of knowing that I, that I do your will. Please be seated and take a moment to prepare your offering as stewards of our church. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father.
Amen. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Archbishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. join our hearts and our minds together and in saying this prayer together we choose love instead of hate we choose community instead of isolation and we choose God as a response to everything happening in the world and so let us join our words together in the prayer that Jesus taught us as we say our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. We graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer one another a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Our Eucharistic procession will begin from the front of the church. All are welcome, but please wait until the ushers arrive at your pew before you come forward. If for whatever reason you are not receiving communion at this time, please place your hands over your chest and receive a blessing instead.
Please stand. Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray the healing work of your mercy and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you. Through Christ our Lord. Please be seated once again. Good morning. We have a few announcements. First of all, please pick up a bulletin on your way out of the church. It looks like this. View it on our website. It is filled with things you need to know about our parish. But just to highlight a few things, are you or your child in need of baptism, first communion, or confirmation? There will be, <clears throat> there will be representatives of our religious education team outside after Mass to answer any questions you have about preparing and registration children, youth, and adults for these sacraments. Please stop by at the tables outside for more information. And if you are an English-speaking adult wanting to know more about the Catholic faith, classes for the right of Christian initiation for adults in person this year will begin on Sunday, September 12 at 9 a.m. Father JT is leading the course this year. So if you are interested in receiving the sacraments of baptism, First Communion, or Confirmation, please send Father JT, an email to schedule an initial meeting. His email can be found on our website. Please see the bulletin on our website and Facebook page for even more information. Thank you, and have a blessed week. Before we uh, end our celebration, just wanted to give another welcome to our new pastor. We're gonna be welcoming him for a couple weeks. So Father Jack Benz, if you could just raise your hand. So I mean this when I say this, he's really enjoying meeting people from, from our community here. So please go up and introduce yourselves and say hello. Please stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, let us go in peace.
Thank you. Have a great week.